Hey, what's up guys? This is Krishna here. Welcome to this exciting Houdini Protocols Deactivation Tutorial. I did a video some time ago and this is a long overdue tutorial and I'm only going to cover the first part which actually has the technique behind it. The rest of them are enhancements of this. And I'll leave all the files on Gumroad for free and check it out. If you feel generous, you can contribute towards it. I would appreciate if you can please give this video a like and subscribe to the channel. Also, check out the YouTube pack on aejuice.com. The below animation is from there. You get a 10% discount when you use the code RESILIENT. Links in description. Okay, let's get straight into it. Alright, let's do this. Let's create a geo container. And we will call this sim. Dive in. Create a sphere. Change this to polygon. That's good enough for us. And then I'll put in a mountain and I'll animate it uh, like so. Okay. I'll also change the start and well end frame to 120. That's more than enough for this. And just enable this time here. Let's animate it so it moves from left to right. And this will be there. And at 96, this will move by five or whatever. Okay. So it goes like that. All right, fine. And we'll use this as our source for our pop network. Okay, let's dive in. Let's enable this. And you can see the particles are being generated. That's fine. But we don't have any velocity um, coming in. Okay, so I could actually put in a trail node here and compute velocity, compute velocity. And then if I run this now, the particles move. Okay, but I don't want that. All right. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a pop wind here and increase the amplitude and increase the swirl size to two. And now the pop wind will actually take care of it. We got this going, but as you can see, the particles are keep moving. The idea is to enact or deactivate them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a box here. Okay. And let's template that. Press enter. And I'm going to extend this box just right there. All right. And I'm going to increase the divisions here. And I'm going to put in a mountain here as well. So it looks like that. Just to give some irregularity to the to the bounding box because I'm going to use this as the bounding box inside of this bounding box the particles are free to move once they exit this they're no longer free to move they will lose their velocity and eventually come to a stop let's dive into the sim and let's see obviously nothing has changed okay so I'm going to put in a SOP solver here and dive inside and let me just use this side as well here I'm gonna put in an object merge and bring in that box we created this guy here and into this box but for the incoming geometry from the dot geometry here I'm gonna create a group group create and I'm gonna create a group called stop and change it to points and this will be all of it really I also want to create another group here just underneath it and connect this to the bounding box where and decide this guy will be bounding region and bounding object and this will be called advact okay let's just call it advact meaning it can move I'm gonna put in a group combine connect that to there that to there <clears throat> now I want to separate the stop is all but advect so anything that is advect will not be part of the stop group okay so why am i doing this um, i used to be able to see this thing but i can no longer see it but anyway i don't know what are we going to do with this we're going to create a merge node here and i'm going to drop that guy in here and in the pop wind i want to check this group 
and you should only affect advact group that's number one uh, let's now check it out so at the moment they go out they shouldn't advact all right uh, they shouldn't the pop wind should not affect them you can see some of these particles are getting stuck however when it does go out although the pop wind is no longer coming into play it continues to move because of the momentum okay so how do we stop that I'm gonna put in a pop wrangle here and I'm gonna say you're going to be a part of stop group and V at V which is velocity multiply equal 0 0.9 and that means that your velocity will reduce by 0.1 every single time this gets scanned okay now let's check that out you see the particles are started to stop okay so let's increase the amplitude here and let's check it out yeah there you go perfect I want to actually reduce the size of this sphere okay <coughs> yeah that looks much better I think all right and I want to template this guy as well here let's see just to check let's uh, put in a color here for the two groups just so that we can see okay You can clearly see what's happening here now. Okay. All right, let's move straight into rendering. Okay, let me go ahead and add a null here and call it out. Okay, let me get out and disable these. I'm gonna create a new container. And I'm gonna call this particles. I'm gonna render by uh, instancing in Redshift, so I'm going to disable that and dive in, put in object merge, and bring this guy, which is the sim. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and kill the color because we're going to use a color node here. Okay, and kill the color, it's always better to clean it up, and then color node and ramp from attribute. And I'm going to ramp it with velocity. Okay, so there you go. But you can see that there is color, there is no color here, so I, I don't know <coughs> what's happening there, but I want uh, magma, okay, so I'm going to just call it that. In fact, not magma, maybe plasma, yes, because uh, these are not, this is not black. If it, this is black, the particles that stop will disappear off of the render. I don't want that. I still want to be able to see it, okay? Create a camera here. That's okay. It's just still here. All right, fine. And let's do a few things. Let me get rid of that. <coughs> Let me add an attribute randomize here and call it pscale. And change this to custom ramp, single parameter fitted between these values 0 0.002 to 0 0.004 per se. And I want most of the particles to be small. Okay, so I moved the position to 0.75 here. And then I also want to put in attribute randomize to orient it differently. It's a four vector value, okay, orient. And I'm gonna use inside sphere. So I'm gonna just call it null and I'm gonna say out PTS. The way instances work in Redshift is that you need to create an instance for every instance you want to uh, instantiate on the particles okay so in this case I'm just gonna bring in a sphere we will test it by putting replacing the sphere with a a peg head or whatever I'm gonna create a mountain just for fun and then put in a null at the end and call it out okay actually call this instance and how do we set this up 
we go back into particles and just after we import the particles and I'm going to create a point randle here and I'm going to say s at instance is equal to open codes slash obj obj slash instance and then close codes and enter now if you're not sure what this path is you can just go select the instance copy it control C and then come here and paste it here it'll just come up okay once that is done now Redshift recognizes this attribute called instance I should just work okay let me go ahead and create a Redshift and select that and this is Redshift version 2025.2.0 and Houdini 20.5.410 okay fine I'm gonna create another container here before I use the materials and I'm gonna actually call this render particles this is the one I'm going to render and I'm gonna color this red inside of it what we need is we need to get the points to instantiate so that is in the particles in out points this is what we want and because we have set this guy up here this will automatically just work now okay right I want to enable motion blur and I also want to enable motion blur here okay I think we're set here now fine okay let me go ahead and do first render here okay I can see something so I'm gonna go ahead and create RS material builder and I'm gonna call this parts inside of it we know we have color attribute so I'm going to bring in RS point attribute here and it's automatically set to by default it's set to CD which is the color we want connected to base color as well as emission color okay I have not assigned any materials yet okay but when you instantiate in Redshift the material needs to go to the instance not the particles because usually you'll just assign your material to the particles and select render object as particles here and it'll just render but with instance it's not the same you have to assign your material here I'm gonna go ahead and assign it here there it is I'm going to there it is you can see now it's showing up uh, not that visible but there it is it's there okay now I'm gonna go ahead and try and adjust these guys here I'm just gonna double it in size right something's showing up but we have to adjust some stuff in here I want the emission to come up so it's a bit, yeah there it is you can see that now there you go it's much better and the motion blur is working as well which is good okay let me add a bloom and a streak and I'll reduce the threshold here and I'll reduce the threshold of this guy as well Okay, there you go. Fine, looks good. Oh, you could use depth of field if you like. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change the focal length of this to 135. So it goes much closer. Might have to move the camera around a little bit. But per se here, right. okay now let me click on this icon here it says click to focus and what's the sampling it's set at 16 right now hopefully oof, okay that's that's definitely not right unfortunately you'll have to click on it exactly where it is at if this is a problem what I can do is I can actually render the particles directly just momentarily okay and let's see if I can oh there it is okay now you can see it's 21 which is which seems more realistic oh that's okay all right I'm gonna that I'm gonna reduce this I haven't even enabled the bouquet yet so there you go
There it is. Perfect. Okay. I'm going to kill that one and open that one again. And change that. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and reduce this now. So 10, maybe. Okay. Uh, it's somewhere here, I think. So if you're not a big fan of this color here, okay, so what I can do is I'm going to go ahead and disconnect these guys. And I'm going to change the emission color to this kind of color here. It's not bad. Just a bit more reddish. Okay. And I think that is actually okay as well. This is the original color. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and render this and I'll come back. Okay, the rendering is done. I did four renders in total, or all four of them are low res renders. Okay, so the one on the left are wide angle shots, and the one on the right are close up shots, as you can tell. Um, so that's the final render. It's not as good as the original, say right here. That's the original render, and you know, it, t it took a little bit more time in finding out the right depth of field and the co colors and whatnot. So but here it is. This is the final render and the technique is the same. You just got to play around with the uh, rendering settings a little bit more, maybe camera settings even more, you know, etc. Okay. Thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Cheers.